Good morning, everyone. And welcome to First English, and welcome to the season of Advent where we prepare the way, we prepare ourselves, we prepare our hearts for the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is the time for great joy. This is the time for thankfulness and gratitude. I invite you now to pause to gather your thoughts as we sing together our doxology, and I invite you to stand as you are able. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives power to become children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you all now to be seated for our children's message and lighting of the Advent wreath. Wow, got a great crowd today. Now, who here knows what this is? The Advent The Advent candles. Wow, I am very impressed. Do you want to preach today? Okay, I'm just checking. I always, I always have to ask. Right, these are the Advent candles, and this is the Advent wreath. And we light these candles as a way to get ourselves ready and excited for the birth of Jesus. Because we're all, I think all of us are excited about something, right, today? Right? What's coming up soon? Uh, Christmas. Christmas, that's right. The greatest gift that we could possibly imagine. Hello. <laughs> You're fine. And this is a way of getting ourselves ready. Now today we're gonna light one of the candles for our Advent wreath. And this is the hope candle. And one of these blue candles for the hope candle so we can have hope in Jesus Christ and get ourselves ready and to prepare the way. So you ready to light the hope candle? Okay. So, so Greta's gonna help us out. And with, yeah, with the lighting of each candle, it helps us know that we're getting closer and closer and closer to that Christmas day where Jesus Christ is born. the center one. That's the Christ candle. And then this is the hope candle. You always light the Christ candle because Jesus is always with us. All right. So you all ready to say, gonna say amen? amen? Amen. All right. Go back to your families and we're going to sing together. O come, O come, Emmanuel.
your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, awaken us to the threatening dangers of our sins and keep us blameless until the coming of your new day. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First reading is from 1 Thessalonians 3, 9 to 13. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that we feel before our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you face to face and restore whatever is lacking in your faith. Now, may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we abound in love for you. And may he so strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 21st chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, there will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth, distress among the nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding for what is coming upon the world, for the powers of heaven will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up, and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. 
Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know the summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth, will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard, so that your hearts are not weighed down with the dissipation and drunkenness and worries of this life. And that day does not catch up with you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you all to be seated. And then the choir began to sing. Yes, we have entered that Christmas season, the season that we all, we know so well, and yet it always feels so new every single time, every word, every, every song. And now we're in that moment, we're in that mad dash that begins with Thanksgiving Day, it ends with Christmas Day. As we are daily, we are reminded daily of how many shopping days there are until, until Christmas. Where just the amount of the pressures with the expectations, they're heightened to such a fever pitch. I can practically just feel them in the atmosphere. A time when every message out there seems to Seems to, seems to advertise and promise that all my dreams will come true. That everyone's dreams will come true. If I, just, if I just do the right thing, if I just buy someone the right gift. But you know that all of this, all of these dreams, all of these expectations, I mean, it's not, it's never as advertised, is it? Especially in seasons like this, the, and all the pressures. Will I find that perfect gift? Will, will my family stop fighting? Will, will I overcook the turkey? Again, like the turkey that I overcooked for Thanksgiving. Or with all of these anxieties and these pressures that become overwhelming, can I find what the season is really about as it is, seems to be smothered by anything from Black Friday to Cyber Monday? This most wonderful time of the year. Because this most wonderful time of the year most often feels like the most vulnerable time of the year. I know it does to me. But I also know that it doesn't need to be that way. I know that for a fact. I know that for a fact that I'm willing to take a deep breath and listen to my faith and remember why we're here, what all this is about in the first place. You know, earlier, earlier last week, I wholly admit that, that the, the pressures of the season, they were already getting to me. So many things, there's so many things going on at once, so many plans going on between uh, either my family or and there's in-laws, and there's almost so many different things, and it wasn't even Thanksgiving yet. And I, I could already feel it. I could already feel it that, I mean, Christmas was far away. And the pressures, they, were, they just felt like they were mounting. And in the midst of all this chaos, we had this, uh, it was this citywide Thanksgiving service. This was at St. John's, uh, St. John's Lutheran Church here in town on Main Street. And um, we, I went to this, this service to, I'd, I'd just say, uh, it was an opening litany. It was really, it was really simple. I wasn't, even, I wasn't preaching. And yet, by the time I got there, I was, I was unfocused. I was exhausted. Um, and it was a time I just needed to sit 
and pray. And it was a beautiful service. And so many, just every church throughout, every Lutheran church throughout Oshkosh was represented. We had, we had multiple, multiple preachers. The, the choir was massive. It, it took up the entire, in fact, I feel like it took up the whole worship space. When they sang, and right there, that's when I remembered. I remembered what this is about and why we are here. It was right there when the choir began to sing. And I felt saved. And I remembered why we do this and why in these moments when we get ready for when we get ready to celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To take that moment to feel that salvation beyond everything else that's happening in the world, every single expectation, every single pressure. Why we're here. Now our gospel, our gospel for today, which is Jesus, Jesus paints the most amazingly beautiful, poetic, terrifying picture of, of the apocalypse. That, I mean, it's something where, I mean, it gives us this, this vision of what the end is going to look like. And I read through this, and it reminds me, in fact, actually of the world we live in every day. And how it can feel like the, the world is ending all the time. That, and that to find those moments where in fact to know that rather than li that living in the, in the end times, living in the ending, we are living in the beginning. And why are we living in the beginning? Because we are celebrating our Lord being born again just as we are born again on that Christmas day, when the heaven and earth come together. When everything makes sense, even if only for a few moments, all those pressures, all the pressures, they all go away. All those things that don't matter, because they don't. The, the perfect, the, the perfect gift, the, the only thing that matters is this, right here. We are celebrating our faith. We are celebrating our Lord. And then the choir begins to sing. And it all makes sense. This is what it's all about. It goes beyond the pressures and the presence. This time of year is only about one, of, one thing. And that is about God among us. It is about Jesus Christ crucified and risen. And for, and what's so important is to know that in order for the world to be saved, Jesus must be raised from the dead. And, for, and before Jesus dies and is reborn, Jesus must be born, and that is why we are here. It's a going and a return. And we are celebrating these things again. And with Jesus' rebirth, we are reborn. And we celebrate just like with our trees and with our pageants and with and, and giving the gift, the gift of new life to one another. And what makes that season magical is our Christ. Nothing else. All of these things, everything, this just points the way. It prepares the way. It gets us excited. But it's remember that our Christ, that is the reason for the season. He is the reason for the season. The most wonderful time of the year. And then the choir begins to sing. Amen. I now invite you to stand as you are able. As we profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Preparing the way for the Lord, let us pray for God's arrival. God of righteousness, fill your church with renewed passion for shared ministry and deepen our relationship with Christians all over the world. God of mercy, hear our prayer. God of the cosmos, guide us in your goodness and to love all of your gifts from the sun and the moon from sprouting leaves to bare branches to roaring seas. Let us cherish them all, gracious God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the nations, guide leaders and all in authority. Give them hearts for justice and peace. Protect our soldiers and keep them safe. Prepare all people who serve Help us pray for them. Help us pray for our police, firefighters, and first responders. Keep them safe, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of healing, sustain us and sustain all who are sick and suffering. We pray especially on this day for Alexis Fox, Pastor Marty Ruge, Brittany Ratchman, Jody Porter, David Malky, Deb Jefferson, Wanda White, Audra Haruth, Jim Wills, Krista Parfit, Diana Hirschberger, Tiny Walter, Will Walter, Larry Wiegand, Dolores Gady, Sherry Katzenberger, Randy Samita, Jane Zern, Sue Britton, Millie Kussman, Fred Lebke, Maggie Schmoody, Jim Bazelier, Elaine Last, Ellen Schmidt, and Ron Knobloch. Remind us of your steadfast love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the resurrection, we give you thanks for all the faithful who have died. Comfort those who mourn. Tend to our grief with renewed trust in the promise of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Savior of the nations, loving God, we lift up our prayers to you, prayers known, prayers unknown, prayers we don't know how to pray, prayers we don't know that we have. Loving God, you know them all, and we trust in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Reach out to one another and share the peace of Christ. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ gathered with his disciples and he took bread. He blessed it and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this is the cup and this cup is new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Drink of it always, so that you may remember me. I now invite you to hold hands as you are able, as we pray together in the words that Jesus taught us in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
Taste and see that the Lord is good. You are all invited to the Lord's table. I invite you to be seated. And I'll begin for a blessing with those who have individual communion cups. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ given and shed for you. And a blessing for our Eucharistic ministers. Loving God, please bless these elements. Bless the hands that carry them. Bless the hands that receive them. May they be blessed and guided by your Holy Spirit and your salvation be brought to all the world to those who need it most. Amen. I invite you now to come forward. I invite you to stand as you are able for our communion blessing. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in his grace. Amen. Amen. We give you thanks, gracious God, for if we have feasted on the abundance of your house, send us to bring good news and proclaim your favor to all, strengthened with the richness of your grace through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I now invite you to be seated for our choir. Now please stand as you are able and receive today's blessing. God of endings and beginnings, God of the darkness and the light, God our hope for the journey, bless and keep you now and forever in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now let us sing together with joy. Rejoice, rejoice, believers.
We will.